So for the first few months of the pandemic, I guess like a lot of people, I didn't know what was happening or how long it would be. So I was a bit sad for the first few months, like I wouldn't do anything. I couldn't do my regular routine. So I was just stuck at home doing nothing, playing Animal Crossing. Um, what else? <laughs> 2020 was a year that turned our world upside down, where we had to adapt to this new normal. In these tough times, many of us turned to food as a source of comfort, while an enterprising few saw it as an opportunity to start fresh. These are the pandemic kitchens. Hi, I'm Jake, Yudon scholar and philosopher. So the Gyudon is something that's super savory, super flavorful, very bold. I don't know if it's like me, but I think the part of my personality that really reflects on the Gyudon is like my obsession with how perfect it has to be. For example, if I feel like the rice to meat ratio or rice to sauce ratio is off, even if the customer says he or she likes it, you know, I'll be probing and saying, are you sure you liked it? Are you sure it's okay? It's just these ingredients really done well. Like the attention to detail put into cooking the rice, into making the sauce, into cooking the beef the proper way, into frying the leaves and presenting it in a way that's very appealing and that will travel well. So when I wake up, I check out how many orders I have. So I'm always on Instagram checking on like the people who order because right now that's my only channel to receive orders. And I'll usually go to my vendor who is like a few blocks away long, and buy the vegetables I need for the day. Then I start prepping. So the first step of making the gyudon is sous vide the eggs. That takes about 45 minutes to an hour, so I do it first. After that, I start washing the rice and I cook it. Meanwhile, I'm cutting the beef into thin slices, which I then sear, then I finish in our signature gyudon sauce. Afterwards, everything is ready, so I just plate the rice, top it with beef, um, make little nests for the sous vide eggs, then top it with fried talbos ng kamote, some spring onions, sesame seeds, and chili powder. Then wait for the riders to come. So I started working at the bank out of college. I worked at the bank for two years, and when I was there, I kind of found myself cooking food for Baon to save money. But, you know, my coworkers, they wanted to try my food, my Baon, so eventually I'd make more and more. So it started from me making my own serving, to maybe making two or three, to bringing like a big caldero of food, until it reached the point I was selling 50 to 60 packed lunches. By that time, I realized I was spending more time on the cooking than on the actual banking. So I decided it might have been time to leave because I also had more fun cooking. When I left, I didn't really have an idea. Of course, I wanted to work at restaurants, but it just so happened that MasterChef Asia was taking auditions for their next season. 
So I decided to join and thankfully I got in. I spent about two months in Singapore filming and shooting and I made a lot of friends, learned a lot of new things and eventually I lost. Well, I realized then that I didn't really know how to cook. Uh, I think they just got me because I spoke good English. So, you know, that's okay with me. I actually kind of got a bit discouraged because I lost in the early rounds. And it was me leaving something I knew I was good at at the bank for something that I wasn't so good at pala. So I would doubt myself really, but you know, I figured I had, I had already made the decision to transition into the culinary field and I might as well stick to it. My parents were against the idea. They were like, we sent you to school and everything, that you're just gonna throw it away to cook. And I'm like, yeah. I was unemployed for about two months, I was feeling really sad, but eventually I just wrote letters to a lot of restaurants I really admire. Probably wrote around 10 to 15 letters to different people, like all personal and everything. And you know, I finally landed the job, thankfully. So that was the start of my restaurant career. My first job was at a restaurant called Allium, which is now closed. It's like a fine dining restaurant in Makati. After that, Allium underwent a renovation, and during that time I went to work at a farm in Laguna. Just to kind of, it's always been a dream of mine to work in a farm. So I was developing recipes for them with produce that was unmarketable. So these ugly looking vegetables, but were totally fine to eat. So we would make like salads or tomato sauce and stuff like that. About two or three years into my cooking career, I was pretty tired of making minimum wage or less, especially coming from a bank. So it just so happens that one of my friends was opening a food park, and I saw that as an opportunity to kind of start my own business. Since, you know, food parks were a trend before, I think in around 2017. So that was my first foray into entrepreneurship, if you can call it that. Throughout my stint, an opportunity presented itself to put up a restaurant in a pretty busy space in Rockwell Business Center in Mandaluyo. So I took that opportunity with the money I had saved up and started Ligaya Al Tanghap. Um, we served Filipino comfort food, you know, it's just stuff you could have every day like tapsilog, lugaw, sisig, pansit, things that people crave for. So before the pandemic, working on Ligaya, my restaurant was in Mandaluyong, and I would train jiu-jitsu in Mandaluyong also, so I had a nice little routine going. Um, we had a lot of customers because, you know, our place was busy, so it was really nice. I was really enjoying that type of lifestyle. Business was going good, but when March rolls in and the pandemic comes along, you know, um, offices have to stop and like work pretty much stops. A lot of my customers were office goers, so them not going to work meant that I had no business, you know, no, I had no people to feed. So about a month into the pandemic, I had to close my business. So it was really difficult for me to close the business because that meant my employees losing their livelihood. And you know, these people, they work so hard and you know, it pains me to be only be able to be paying them minimum wage. But now with the pandemic, with the business having to close, like I couldn't pay them at all. And these people had families to support. So a few months into the pandemic, I was super broke because it cost a lot of money to close my business and, you know, lending my employees this money that would never come back to me and I needed a source of income. So I experimented with a bunch of things. I tried selling pre-cooked beef.
You know, I would try cooking a lot of stuff. I made like a kimchi, slow cooked beef rice and stuff like that. So eventually, you know, I was just talking to friends and they wanted to ask like what else I could cook for them. I tell my friend like, hey, maybe we want to try this gyudon of mine. So I made her try it and she liked it. And I realized, you know, this could potentially be a business. So I started making it a lot more. And you know, first I started with friends. I actually never advertised, aside from my one Facebook post. And it was just purely word of mouth, which is something I'm grateful for. Taking pictures and making videos is something I picked up during the pandemic long. You know, it's one of those things that you pick up because you don't have anything else to do. Most of the videos I do, the accompanying music is original music made by my friends in collaboration with me. So, you know, it's just a thing that gives me energy working with people. I just have fun with it and I try to make, make the videos fun. I'm, I, of course, above anything else, the food has to look good. Working at home is nice because I don't have any overhead aside from like electricity, water, ingredients. So it's very minimal. I don't have to pay rent. So the challenges are like just not having a commercial kitchen, working in a house kitchen and just it being me and my brother cooking. We're kind of limited in terms of what we can offer. Right now at our current volume, we can survive. But if the plan is to scale up, we might have to look into, you know, expanding outside, maybe having a commissary or something like that. Well, my favorite feedback is when people swear. Or a lot of people have called it life-changing. A lot of people have called it the best gyudon in Manila. Um, I don't know if that is true or not. You'll have to try it yourself if you want to find out. It's always been my dream to have a restaurant. But since the pandemic, I don't know if that dream will ever come true or if it ever ma even makes sense to have a restaurant. So, you know, I'm thankful to be able to have a business, to be able to sell. What I'm working on now is a new brand. It's called Kodawari. And we'll be selling the gyudon and a few other Japanese food trays also. So that's something I'm very excited about. The branding is looking super beautiful. And yeah, hopefully it reaches a lot of people. Um, it's hard because the climate, you don't really know what's going to happen when the pandemic's going to end. The goal is just to get rich and, you know, taking steps every day, which I think will lead me there.